comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. And when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in power of God. Yet among the mature, we do, not, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thought except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now that we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Here is the lesson.
Good morning. Good morning. It's been a busy week. And if you happen to be over on our Apostles website, I put a link for the interview that I did with the Christian Broadcasting Network, their global show. And it just fascinates me that our ministry among us here from Apostles is has gone from a national level to a global level. Isn't that amazing? It, I mean, it blows me away. I don't know if it, if it does that to you. But I just find it fascinating what God is doing and the, uh, the opportunities that are out there. And so, I, just a quick story before I share with you in the Word. Uh, I was all set up and ready for the interview. And I uh, had, my, had my iPhone there, and I'm upstairs in the office, and I'm getting ready to have, uh, have the interview. And they said, uh, my publicist had said, they're going to call you a few minutes before the interview. And they're going to talk with you a little bit about what they're going to have you address, what you're going to speak about, questions. And I was like, oh, that's really good. And so uh, everything's all set up. The connection's made. The, the folks from CBN um, came on, and we're talking a little bit before the recording. And they said... Well, the first question we're going to ask you has to do about Tyree Nichols and how can this mother forgive because she said that she's going to forgive the officers that caused his death. Now put yourself in my place. I'm just a preacher from Chesapeake. And all of a sudden, they're going to talk to me about something that's making international news. It has to do with justice, forgiveness, and all of, all of that. And I was so sad. Oh my. How many of you would like to be in my spot right now? How would you like to be in the hot seat? Does that sound like a lot of fun? I mean, you talk about a guy that's walking a high a high tension wire, you know, I'm like that. But you know what? You know, the scripture says that the Holy Spirit will give you the words that you need at just the right time. And you know, the Lord did. He was faithful to his word. We really can trust him. And the what he has given us is far beyond a human knowledge and a human imagination of what, how we would normally handle things in the physical, in this natural realm. So if you have any interest in, uh, I, I just refer you to go to our Apostles website, our Facebook site, and listen to the interview because that's where it is. And uh, God was faithful and um, I was, I came away just really excited about what God had done in that moment. Praise God. Can we give him some praise in this house? Praise Jesus. Well, Lord, open your word to us. All that you have for us now. Open our hearts, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Holy Spirit, speak to us. You promised to make your word come alive to us. As we encounter your word, open our hearts and our minds, our ears. And then also, grant that as you give us downloads of the Spirit, that you would seal that and you would appoint it to our heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and all God's people said, Amen. This is God's word. Let's open it together, would you, God, shall we? We'll be in... 1 Corinthians, Lisa did such a fine job there. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. I like this passage. I couldn't pass it by. And it was as if the words from this passage, as I read over the appointed text for today, just jumped off the page. That's one of the ways that God speaks, doesn't he? Have you ever been reading scriptures? And all of a sudden, the particular words will go 3D on you. That's one of the ways, and you can take that to the bank. That that's one of the ways that God speaks. Another way is as you've, read, you've been reading a scripture, and you read it over and over and over, and then all of a sudden, just like that, you have a new insight. There's a new understanding that you have about that word. Did you know that's God speaking? See, God speaks all the time. You know, we have a chatty God. I mean, he created us just so he'd have somebody to talk with. Because he loves to chat. He loves to reveal his heart to us. And so, being open to what he has, he's speaking constantly. It's just as us, frequently, we don't know how to recognize when God's speaking. And Paul had some wonderful words that bring the church of Corinth back into line, back into order. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. But you realize that this is Valentine's Month, right? Guys, don't forget. Okay? Valentine's Month. And I don't know if you've ever noticed that you get a lot farther with your bride, guys. When there are times when you can set all your reasoning and your rationale and your excellence of logic aside and just speak heart to heart with your beloved. When Arden and I were getting ready to get married, we had a wonderful, there was a wonderful pastor couple. They are both ordained, Assemblies of God pastors. And I met with him. She met with her. And one of the words of advice that she gave to my wife, her name was Fran Tryon, Pastor Fran Tryon. And she said, I know you're probably, when you get home from work, Arden, you're going to have a lot of things that you want to share because you've talked to a lot of people and there's a lot of exciting things you want to share and maybe you're going to have some things that aren't so pleasant that you need to talk with Dave about. But what I want to encourage you to do is feed him first. How many of you found that works? Oh, yeah. Feed him first. Us guys run on an empty belly. The pain that we experience when we're hungry is on par with a woman giving birth. <laughs> Are we still friends? <laughs> yeah, I love the fact that I can play with you and we can have a good time together. And you, you just know, you know, that may not be a supernatural download from the Holy Spirit, okay? But <laughs> it's true. We do tend to listen, us guys, we do tend to listen a little bit better when we've had a chance to have a little bit of food, and then we can just kind of relax, and then, you know, we can listen. And for us guys, we also, at the same time, need to just plan on listening to our spouses. Listen. Don't try to fix everything, almighty fixer. 
Just have your time. Now, this may not fit everybody, but I just found that you just take a little bit of time. It's about connecting at the heart level. There's, uh, I'm just really excited because I was looking in the bulletin announcements and it mentioned adult Sunday school. And one of the things that was, that was drawn, that drew me to it, was that today they're going to be, Marlon and his group are going to be taking a look at a term called Pontifex Maximus. It was actually the name, the original name of the pontiff, the pope. And it literally means Pontifex Maximus, if I understand correctly. It's chief bridge builder. Hmm. Am I close, Marlon? I honestly don't know. <laughs> well, I, I seems pretty close, and, I, and with the Latin anyway, back on this, the chief bridge builder, that that role was seen as the one who builds bridges among people. And I think that's a powerful word for us in the church. Because as we explore in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if you open your scripture, we see Paul who is speaking to the church of Corinth and he wants to build, to build a bridge. The church is very divided. They have this thing about power and position and how the haves and the have-nots. Those who flowed in the Spirit, those who had all kinds of giftings in the Holy Spirit, and then some looked down on those that they didn't recognize because they were only looking through their, at their own particular giftings of the Spirit. And imagine that. They would compare themselves to one another. I'm so glad that doesn't happen in the church today. So there's so much division going on. Aren't you thankful for messed up churches in the New Testament? Because if they weren't messed up, Paul wouldn't have anything to say. He would just be simply, you know, writing them a letter and saying, having a great time in Rome, wish you were here. But instead, whether he's in the jail in Philippi or he's, you know, he's in Ephesus or wherever he is and he's writing his letters, you go into every single one of the letters, the epistles in the New Testament and he's addressing jacked up churches. And I'm thankful for it because now here we are over 2,000 years later and we still need Paul's letters. We need his directions. And I like to think of him as Papa Paul. Because he's going to, you know, he could have done something, come in with this big agenda. Imagine if he had this big agenda of things that needed to be sorted out the way he thought they should be in the church. And he just marched over and he walked over and said, I've been thinking about it for a long time, and I think we should be seeing him 514 a lot more. You know, we're not really doing that around here. What do you think of that? <laughs> Just so you know, Jane was queued up beforehand. <laughs> now, how was that when I came over? Not a lot of fun. Very intimidating. Very intimidating, demeaning. demeaning. Was there a whole lot of Holy Ghost in that, my love? Um, I saw nothing but human. You saw flesh, human. sin, rotten human 
stinking flesh. Thank you for bearing with me. Didn't she do a good job? Yeah. Didn't she give her a good job? Is that probably not real fun? Rotten human stinging flesh. But Paul, how did he deal with that? Let's look at this. Because the church of Corinth, they suffer from affluenza. Do you know what that is? It's something that actually we suffer from in America. You know, it's kind of like, well, we got money and you don't. Well, that's not our problem. And yet you have this whole body. You have these, the, this church in Corinth where you have some that have and others that don't. And sometimes things that, you know, well, some folks have access to some things and other folks, sign says you got to have a membership card to get inside. Mm. Right? Has, have nots. Who gets in? Who's a member of the special club? Who isn't? All these kinds of things. Pride, power, position. All that's going on in the church of Corinth. And it can be said equally true of the American church. But let's take a look and see, how does Paul deal with this? Just, and Lisa did such a great job. Let's just listen to his heart. And I, brother, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, Declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except what? Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And that's the central thing that everybody can agree on. Those of you who work in mediation would have to agree that one of the greatest things we can do is arrive at those points where we have, where we intersect, where we share from the heart, where we agree. Aside from everything else, get to those things that we all agree on. But imagine this, as you read this, does Paul have a pompous attitude? He's not Paul the pompous, right? He's Papa Paul instead. And he, he says, go on, verse 3. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And that means... Much carefulness. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. You see, that was something that they really valued in Corinth. They valued having the perfect God. They valued having the perfect wisdom, the perfect insight, and everything. And that was their culture. That was what they're coming from and they were taking that mindset and they're just uh, automatically assuming that that's the mindset that we're going to have in the fledgling church. Are you still with me? Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing we're going to, we're going to see how that translates. And so what does Papa Paul do? <laughs> he flips the whole thing on his head. I mean, can you imagine this who, who of all the people would have a right to claim a birthright mentality and an entitlement mentality and say, my father was so-and-so, whose father was so-and-so, and, -so, and my, his father was so-and-so, and track it all the way up through the Jewish lines. <coughs> He also had the ability to say, 
I went to Gamaliel's school. I went to, which was the Harvard, better than Harvard, of his day. It could have said, you know, touted his degree. I could, you know, and, and he could have very well done all these things, but does Paul do that? Now, one of the things they also valued in that culture was to be a master orator, to be able to articulate the wisdom. Keep in mind, it's only a couple hundred years since Socrates, Plato, all those things, all those guys. I know, I said Plato, he got excited. No, it's not that kind of Plato. is going to address that and say, you know, things are different in the culture of the kingdom. Because where we value these victorious people on, you know, who and the gods and everything that have, you know, have these magnificent stories of riding these magnificent horses or the gods of the sea, Poseidon and what have you. He instead is going to come back and he's going to say, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of all this human wisdom. But what? He's going to give them something even better. He's going to give them and refer to demonstrations of the Spirit and power. That your faith should not be rooted in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. When we see His power and the work of His Spirit, sometimes we can think, well, I've got to have this mighty agenda in the church. And I've got to whip that church into shape and get them to follow my agenda. Have you ever encountered pastors that way? How's that go for them? Not so well. But instead, Papa Paul, he's basically going to pull up a chair, have himself a seat, and what's he going to do? He's going to just connect with the heart love. Now, what's that have to do with our human relationships? What does that have to do with us as we gather together and we worship Sunday after Sunday? Or maybe get together in council meetings or board meetings or whatever, planning meetings? A lot more connecting at the heart, a lot more listening, a lot more focusing on the things we share together, because this whole thing, that I might know Christ and Him crucified. See, we can have a lot of different thoughts, we can have a lot of different you know, feelings, and a lot of different passions about things, and we do. And I love that. But at the heart of it, it's always got to be, okay, well, this, this, this seems like a great idea. And this, you know, what ultimately, <clears throat> Paul will go on to say, we need to be searching the heart and the mind and the spirit. And it's only the spirit that can lead us and direct us and give us the mind of Jesus. You ever hear the old saying that Einstein said, I want to know God's thoughts. The rest are details. I want to know God's thoughts for our congregation. I want to know God's thoughts for our direction. I want to know his desires. Less human stinking flesh.
flesh. Take that flesh, God, and burn it as an offering. Lord God, come this morning. You know the times when we've tried to ramrod things. And Lord, we try to, you know, we, we do things and we think it's really what you want. But frequently we haven't processed it through your spirit. And then we, we haven't sought each other's hearts to be in one accord as they were in Acts chapter 2. And then we get frustrated with each other. And Lord, it, it feels at times like we're trying to push an ox cart up sideways. Lord, there are things that may make sense to the natural, our natural minds. Give us your mind. It's, it's you that matter, Jesus. Lord God, forgive us all. Forgive me. Forgive all of us, Lord, for those times when we've been harsh to each other and pushed our best ideas on others. Lord God, grant us the godly, uh, that we would be under godly authority and godly direction working together toward the ends that you have. Not just to satisfy our hearts and to satisfy our agendas. And we give you praise, Jesus. Be glorified. Nothing else, grant that we would know nothing else except Jesus Christ and him crucified in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's turn to page 85 of your worship book, Stand, and let us recite the words of the Apostles' Creed, the beliefs of our Christian faith. Page 85. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, um, Miss Donna Golden is going to be leaving us. I'm going to ask her to come forward for prayer very quickly. As many of you know, her beloved husband, Jay, passed away only a few short months ago. And it's been our joy to have you worship in our midst. And you come from an Episcopalian background. I do. And how did we do? It was pretty good Lutherans. You're a lot of fun. We are a lot of fun. <laughs> it's been a joy having you with us. And I just wanted to have a moment to bless you on your journey. You're going up to be with Jay's family up around D.C., right? Yes. And so how wonderful that they've opened their hearts to her and they want her closer. And they're going to look after her. So we have a little cluster of apostles, folks, up in that direction. I think we're just going to have to form a, a little apostle subgroup up in that direction. Pretty soon we're going to take over. 
Lord, thank you so much for Donna, and we bless her and the new journey that you have for her. Continue to pour out your healing and your comfort, oh Lord, as she grieves uh, such a, an incredible loss of her beloved husband. Grant her journey's mercies, and may she know that she has our hearts, that she takes those with, them, with her on her journey. And we give you thanks and praise that we've been able to be a place of comfort, a warm place of been so receptive to her, bless her now on her journey. She's a missionary of apostles. In Jesus' name, amen. God's richest blessings on your journey. The peace of the Lord is with you always. Let us share the peace of the Lord.